<laughs> Hello, statistics students. This video is the second video, or what would be the second day in class, on correlation. The last video is kind of long. I want to make this one significantly shorter. So let's get started. When we talk about a correlation coefficient, or we say two variables are correlated, we're specifically talking about quantitative variables in statistics. Um, we don't say that two um, categorical or qualitative variables are correlated in statistics. There might be a relationship between two variables, but not a correlation unless they're both numerical. Here are some examples. <clears throat> Eye color is qualitative, IQ is quantitative. So there can't be a correlation, only a relationship. Eye color and hair color are both um, qualitative variables. So we would say that they, there might be a relationship, but there might not be a relationship, but there cannot be a correlation because they're not both numerical. Height and weight, you could calculate a correlation coefficient between those. Let's say that we have a correlation coefficient between two variables. Does that mean that one variable causes the other? And currently, in the current textbook we're using on page 480, we see a whole bunch of explanations for determining, is there a cause and effect relationship? <clears throat> Does one variable definitely cause the other? Does X cause y number two talks about maybe you got it backwards does y cause x number three says what if both of those um variables are caused by a third variable okay now it's better um are they both caused by a third variable for instance um, ice cream sales and home invasion robberies if you um, plot those throughout the year um, they kind of move in tandem. When ice cream sales go up, so do home invasion um, robberies. Does that mean that one causes the other? The answer is no, they're both caused by the temperature. When the temperature goes up, it's more comfortable for bad guys to be outside and break into your house at two in the morning. When temperature goes down in February, they don't want to be outside as much. And of course, people don't eat as much ice cream in February. So that's an example of both variables being caused by a third variable. And the other possibility is, could it just be a coincidence that two variables are related? So I have a graphic for you. Let me shut this down for a moment. And what am I doing wrong? Oh, uh, stop share, there we go. I'm gonna to have to get used to this pretty soon. So now what I want to do is I want to show you a graphic about Internet Explorer, everyone's favorite web browser. Now here's a graph. It looks like as Internet Explorer usage goes down, the murder rate goes down. <clears throat> well, does that mean that one causes the other? I, mean, I guess you might, some people might think that if you have to use Internet Explorer, it would make you more inclined to kill somebody. But in general, I would say that's a case where they're just um, coincidentally related. Let's take a look at what's that? Oh, another example. <coughs> And it's Oh no, I've lost it. Mm. All right, I think I'm gonna find it here. As long as I can, there it is, all righty. So how do you correlate homicide rates, which is a number to state gun laws? Well, you read this article, which you can tell now comes from the Obama um, administration timeframe. 
lot of information in here. But what the author did here was they looked at the homicide rate in different states along with the Brady score. And the Brady score um, is named after James Brady, who was President Reagan's press secretary. And after he was shot in the um, attempted Reagan assassination, the Brady um, Foundation was created to get stronger gun laws. And so they rank um, the strength of gun laws with a score. So now we have some um, quantitative variables that we can look at. They also give you a letter grade. So here are the 10 lowest um, jurisdiction or lowest homicide jurisdictions. Here are the 10 highest. <clears throat> Thankfully, California is on neither. Well, it'd be great to be on the lowest, but at least we're not on the highest list. And then if you did a scatter plot of the data, does there appear to be a relationship between homicide rate and the strength of gun control laws. And this um, author came out with, if you look at all 50 states plus Washington, D.C., the correlation is positive 0.032. I think we all agree that if you remember the last video, 032 would be a very small, um, very weak linear relationship. And that means with um, states with um, stricter gun restrictions have slightly higher homicide rates However, we, would, we are not going to do the part where we would do a hypothesis test to find out, could this really be zero? But that's what he means that when he says the tendency is so small as to be essentially zero. <laughs> so there's just a couple of examples of um, correlation and causation and um, R2 variables related in that way. So now let's go back to um, the Elmo here. And that's not it. <clears throat> All righty, I am clearly doing something wrong. All righty, I'm back. Got my uh, technical difficulties figured out. Clearly, we want to um, graph our data before we ever calculate R. If you can graph your data and say, oh, that data isn't even linear, why would you want to calculate a linear correlation coefficient? So here's some data points. <coughs> Take a look at those data points. Do these data points fall on a straight line? <laughs> Clearly not. What curve would they fall on? Well, hopefully you recognize that the Y coordinate on each of those is the square of the X coordinate. So those points would fall on a parabola, not linear. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna pull up a graph of um, those data points. <coughs> And there, hopefully now that's uh, got my picture out of the way. And here's the data points, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, 4, 16, 5, 25. You can see that those would be perfectly on a parabola. But would you believe that just given, the, if we were given nothing but those five data points, the correlation coefficient R, for those five data points is 0 0.9811, 0 0.98, that's really high. So what's going on here? And the answer is clearly these data points are falling on a parabola, but if we're only looking at these five data points, you can draw a line through them and those five data points would all be pretty close to that line. In fact, I'm gonna do that here with a quickness. No, I'm not, not that way insert a trend line here, a linear one, and you can see that that's the line going right between all five data points. What gives it away though is you have an above, three below, one above. There's a pattern here. The points aren't just randomly above and below. <clears throat> so we're not gonna get into that so much. 
But anyway, I wanted you to see that if we're only looking at these five data points, even though they are clearly on a parabola, we can still get a very high value of R. Boom. So let's go back to our handout that I discussed in the last video. And in that handout, we had two different ways of calculating R. You had this method here. And then you had this formula at the bottom of the page. Let's calculate R both ways for that um, um, parabolic data set and see what happens. <laughs> now again, I'm going to fly through this because the video doesn't need to be that long. You can pause and um, take any kind of notes that you think you need. So let's calculate the correlation coefficient using the top formula on the handout. And this, again, is going to be a brilliant example of why we should always graph our data, because if we could tell it was parabolic, no reason to do this at all. But anyway, here are our five data points. <clears throat> if we calculated x bar and s for each of these <coughs> variables, x and y, it, um, obviously the average x value is 3. So 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And then if you divide by the standard div of these five numbers, you get this zx value. I would encourage you, um, if you have a calculator available or even use um, StatCrunch and just put in those five x values, do some descriptive statistics and get x bar and s and make sure that you can get these five numbers. Do the same for these five y values and you should get these five numbers. Then zx times zy gives us this product. Then we get all five products. The formula says to um, add up all those zx times zy's. So I add them all up and I get this value. And I'm going to divide by n minus 1. n is 5, so I'm going to divide this by 4. There I have a correlation coefficient of 0.9811, which is what I told you a few minutes ago. Again, I highly encourage you to stop the video at this time, confirm these numbers that I've uh, got on the screen right now, make sure you know how to get them. We're now going to use the very same data set, and we're going to use the formula that was at the bottom of your handout. Now, again, if you don't have a calculator that'll do these sigma values for you, you're gonna have to um, figure them out yourself. But that's gonna be one times one, plus two times four, plus three times nine, plus four times 16, plus five times 25. And that will give you sigma x, y. Sigma x is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Sigma y is 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus 25. You should be able to get all of these sigma values. <laughs> then confirm this numerator. You should get 60. If you don't get 60, you did something wrong. Go back and do it again. <laughs> then. Ignore the radical for a moment. Just give, calculate the number under the radical. The number under the radical is 10. If you don't get 10, uh, go back and do it again until you do. The number under the second radical, so again, before we take the square root, the number under the radical is 374. If you don't get that, Stop the video, go back, check your work until you do. Now comes the fun part. You have three numbers. You have this, this, and this. You need to take this as your numerator. 
You need the square root of this, the square root of this, multiply those together, and divide this number by that. Do it without writing anything down. Just enter the um, values into the calculator, and you should get 0 0.9811. If you don't, you're doing something wrong. Go back and do it again until you get this correct. And that is the end of this lesson. Have a great one.